Hello America, this is Tara Tenney. I may be familiar to some of you and to some of you I may not. Either way, I wish to offer a brief history of what led me to this very moment where I'm speaking to you. To start, I must tell you that if it were up to me, I would never have included me speaking to you right now in my fate. Let me explain. In January of 2016, my father was murdered as a result of a premeditated orchestration of local, state, and federal agents in the state of Oregon. This planned orchestration employed a dead man's roadblock. For these agents to have employed a dead man's roadblock on a bend of road where my father bled out in the snow requires justification in the court of law. Now, it's important to note that such a roadblock is designed to create a collision where there is no way to pass through. Such a tactic may only be used in exigent circumstances. Now, ironically, the adjudicatory hearing of the FBI agent in charge the day that my dad was killed, who was indicted by a grand jury for five counts of obstruction of justice during that mission, we discovered, or discovery showed us, that not only did the agents escalate the situation by firing their weapons, but that the roadblock was prepared beforehand on a blind curve which shows no exigency. These premeditated efforts on January 26, 2016 on U.S. Route 395 are thus defined as an ambush. In a U.S. Supreme Court case, the late Justice Scalia saw that strict policy be in play when considering the use of a dead man's roadblock. Now, there was no warrant out for his arrest. He was not a fleeing felon. No state or federal laws had been broken. No aggressive behavior warranted the fire that those agents did. There was no need for the orchestrated ambush. They shot my father. They left him to bleed out in the snow. There was no medical assistance. No charges, no arraignments, no preliminary hearing, no indictment, and no trial by jury, no due process. Now, while the controversy of dad's legitimate political protest and petition for a redress of grievance, using the lawful principles and rights pertaining to setting up and attempting an adverse possession claim was in motion, the agents were trained to presume he was guilty until proven innocent. Our American system, due process, demands contrary to that. You must know that our family is pursuing a wrongful death civil case. Our civil complaint, demand for jury trial in the District Court of Oregon, was filed January 28th, 2000, oh, January 25th, sorry, 2018. From day one after dad was murdered, our family has been raising funds to help this process move forward. After dad was murdered, I found myself diving into study. For months, I would forget to read, forget to eat, I would forget to sleep. All I wanted to do was study. I wanted to fully understand how a God-fearing man like my father, who has no criminal record whatsoever, could be murdered by American agents. I began to write my study down, take notes. I wanted to compile a history for my children. When dad was killed, my children were only 11, 8, 6, and 2. My children will have adult questions, and I wanted to be the one to be able to answer those for them. As I continued to write, eventually the thought occurred to me, I could sell this manuscript to help fund our case. As uncomfortable as the idea of sharing my vulnerability is, my desire to see our case come to pass is stronger. And believe me, I fought that vulnerability. My first version of my book was written in third person. 
because it was a safer vulnerability. And I, through my dear friends who helped read my first print, helped me realize that I needed to put my vulnerability on the altar. And so I switched my language to first person and opened my heart a little more in my writing. I want to see out-of-control agents held accountable. I want to see the bounds the Constitution of the United States sets are maintained and preserved, thus preserving liberty and freedom for all people, not just majority rule. I never dreamed I would write a book. Doing so never was an aspiration of mine, <laughs> but here I am and I am compelled. There's something inside me that pushes me to get this finished. My book, Liberty Rising, One Cowboy's Stand, or, excuse me, Liberty Rising, One Cowboy's Ascent. That is the title of my book. There's deep sentiment and symbolism in that. It is scheduled to be hot off the press the end of April 2019, if not sooner. Right now, I am offering the opportunity for people to get their copy, one of only a hundred, of my hardcover, hardcover limited edition. It will feature timeless stories from a few of my siblings, never before seen pictures, a, and a personal note to you from me. The proceeds will go to help fund our case to hold these agents who are out of control accountable. For only $100, you can help fund our case. You can read the real, raw, painful results that an unmaintained political system brings. You can read from my mind and my heart as one who has felt the sting of this violent pendulum swing. Please visit my mother's booth if you're at a live event. Fill out the electronic form to get your name in the queue to, preserve, to reserve your limited edition hardcover. She can accept your payment there. If you are viewing this online and desire to get a limited edition copy, you can visit our family website. It's one cowboys stand for freedom.com. It's all spelled out O N E C O W S S T A N D F O R F R E E D O M. You can order it there. I wouldn't wait. This limited edition will go quick. There's only a hundred. And as a side note, a standard soft cover will be available soon as well. And I say thank you. Thank you for hearing me out. Thanks for the support to our family. Thanks for being willing to do your due diligence to learn of this story. And may our God bless everyone's efforts to preserve the nation. God bless.